So the, the what this technique consists of, there, there are a couple of things that you have to take into account with uh, recrystallization. Number one is, uh, solubility at room temperature, right? If your solid is soluble in a solvent at room temperature, that's the wrong, you, you don't wanna use that solvent. So your, your solid that you're trying to purify, it needs to be insoluble at room temperature. Right, so at room temperature, if you have a solvent that you you put uh, your compound into and it dissolves right away at room temperature, you can't use it for recrystallization. You need something that is uh, insoluble at room temperature, but soluble at higher temperatures. So it should be insoluble at room temperature. soluble at elevated temps, right? That, that's a huge piece to this. Picking the right solvent is critical. And so for uh, aspirin, the solvent that's, that's chosen that's gonna be used is ethanol. Um, Dr. Russell, what's PDT? Product. It's just an abbreviation, I'm sorry. And I'm also gonna abbreviate, uh, recrystallize, because that's a lot to write. <laughs> so I, you'll see me write it as, Re-X tall, same thing, it's recrystallization. So, so ethanol is, is the solvent that we're gonna use. And the reason is because at room temperature, aspirin is insoluble in ethanol. When you warm up ethanol, aspirin is soluble. And then as it cools down, it becomes insoluble again, right? So that's what, that's the, uh, choosing the right solvent is the, is the most critical part of doing recrystallization, right? The wrong solvent and you're either gonna have your stuff super saturated and you can't get it out of solution without evaporating the solvent off, or you might have a solvent that doesn't dissolve your uh, product at all and that's horrible, so you don't want that. So that's one, one thing you wanna think about. The other thing you wanna think about with recrystallization is um, the, uh, uh, let me let me not say that. You want to think about the presence of what we call insoluble impurities. All right, that's the, that's another thing that you have to think about, and normally. What happens is you dissolve your stuff up, and when you dissolve it up, there'll be something, some solids that may not go in the solution, and but that but those solids are not your product, and so if you have an insoluble impurity, what you have to do is what we call a hot gravity filtration. do a hot gravity filtration. Now, all, all that is, is you take a, a glass funnel and put a piece of filter paper in it, and then you filter that into an Erlenmeyer flask or another beaker, right? While it's hot, that's why it's called a hot gravity filtration. So while your materials are hot, I mean, right, you'll take that and you'll, funnel, you'll pour it right into the funnel with a piece of filter paper, and then filter it into an Erlenmeyer flask. Uh, if it's not hot, what happens is you'll, when that solvent starts cooling down, your product starts crystallizing and then you get it trapped in that filter paper or trapped in the funnel and you don't want that. So you have to do this uh, while it's hot.
right? So you got, so those, those are really are the two like biggest um, catches for recrystallization, finding the right solvent, and then ensuring that once you get your stuff dissolved, that there's no trash floating around in there. And if there is, you have to do a hot gravity filtration. So the, the uh, steps to recrystallization are very uh, simple. All right, very simple. First thing you want to do is heat the solvent. To near boil, not boiling. <laughs> it's really important not to boil um, ethanol or heat it up past its flash point. Because we did have, a, I tell this story every semester, we did have a group one semester that wasn't paying attention and they were heating up ethanol and it caught fire and they didn't even know. They had earbuds in, they were writing, taking notes, uh, writing up the little report part and didn't even realize that the early Meyer flash next to them was on fire. Um, so you want to heat it to near boiling because Ethanol has a very low flash point and it will uh, ignite. Right, so you want to heat your solvent to near boiling. Second thing you want to do, and this is another critical uh, step, is to add the minimum amount of hot solvent to your product. The minimum amount. If you add too much, it's going to be super saturated. And there's, there's actually a clip in this video that we're going to look at, the walkthrough that we're going to look at, where a student actually did that. They added too much ethanol, and we had to do take some special steps in order to retrieve their uh, compound. Right. So you're going to add the minimum amount. Uh, too much will be super saturated. And that's bad. It's not, it's not impossible to recover your stuff, but it's an extra step. And when you're working uh, in synthesis, extra steps are always bad. You always want to do as few steps as possible to get to your stuff. So you don't want it to be super saturated. Add the minimum. And then after you add that minimum amount, you want to start heating the Erlenmeyer flask that actually contains the solvent and your product. So you're gonna heat that on a hot plate. And you'll see all of this when we when we go through the, uh, the walkthrough. Right, so you heat the flask on a hot plate and swirl it. Right, and that's just to ensure mixing and to ensure that your solid will dissolve. Right, after, after heating it and it goes into solution, this is different from the synthesis. If you remember from the last time we met, when we made aspirin, once everything went clear, you had to heat it for an additional five minutes. Here, once, once this dissolves, uh, you wanna take it off the hot plate. So let me put that. I heat it until all the solid dissolves. And then the next thing we're gonna do is cool the room temperature. Right, so we're gonna heat it. Everything goes in the solution. Take it off the hot plate, cool it to room temperature, and then add cold water. Right, the cold water is going to force the aspirin to come out of solution. This aspirin is soluble in ethanol after you have dissolved it, after you heat it up. But then if you add the cold water, it's insoluble in that water ethanol mixture. So when, it, when you add the water, it's gonna facilitate that crystallization 
and the aspirin is going to come out of solution. All right, so with that, let's go to, let me share. Here, and can y'all see that? Yes, sir, we can. All right. I'm going to let's see. I'm already talking about that part. So let me let me pause right here. So when we normally do this aspirin lab, um, we normally get about seven to eight grams of crude aspirin after the synthesis. The maximum amount of ethanol that you want to use for a sample that size is about 25 mils, but we rarely have to use 25. Normally, it's somewhere between 15 and 18 uh, milliliters of, of ethanol, right? So 25 is the max. Anything more than that for a sample that size is, is going to have that sample uh, super saturated. Like a hot boy, for real. It's like you turn it on too. All right, so I'm going to skip to here. Yesterday, the group, yes, the group yesterday, the crude mass was somewhere between seven and eight grams. Has anybody calculated the theoretical yield? The experiment actually worked, right? Because if the if the if the theoretical yield is nine grams and we got a crude mass somewhere between seven and eight, that means it was a pretty good experiment. All right. So let me weigh out three samples, three crude samples. Uh, actually, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna let you do your. Uh, so we're going to take the same early Mars that we use and we're going to transfer this crude air into them, right? So, so we're going to recrystallize from the early Mars flag. So while we do, while I'm weighing this out, All right, so for this part, you can choose uh, which sample you want to like record, because I think on on the uh, data sheet it asks about the crude yield. So when you get to when you see the numbers, just pick one. It's up to you. It doesn't matter which one you pick. There are three samples that are going to be weighed out, so you can pick whichever one you want, and whichever one you pick, you're going to type in that crude yield there. Uh, and then you'll also uh, take the a total amount of ethanol used, which I which we'll get uh, we'll get to that part. All right, but the crude yield is up to you which one you pick. Just turn it down. Turn it down to about fifty. You want it to be hot. Throw out my wax paper and transfer this sample to the wax paper. So that's sample if one. Is wondering, first sample. Sample one, if you want to take that one, the crude mass is 7.13 grams. And if anybody is wondering at this stage of this aspirin, no, you cannot ingest it. It'll make you real sick. You got it. It's kind of powdery with a little bit of shimmer to it. That's a good sample. So this is the second sample. No, that's that's pretty powdery. If it looks kind of, if it's all stuck together and shiny though, that's crap. But these are these are all good samples though. It's gonna have a little bit of shimmer to it, but you don't. It's not gonna be. You don't want it to look like uh like tinsel. You ever seen that little Christmas tinsel? The silver, you don't want to look like that. That's crap. That's going to give you a bad yield because it's full of salicylic acid. All right. So that second sample. So sample two is 7.20. <laughs> so if that's the sample that you want to use, then you can record that that number for your crude mass. It's 
Oh, this is George Malachi, seven point two grams. So I'm just gonna take this and transfer it into this Earl of Mar players. And the reason why I have to do this like this is because we didn't wait a filter paper. Otherwise, we could have just tear the uh, zero the scale out and reweigh the filter paper plus the uh, aspirin. And if you're if you're wondering about the amount of the aspirin that's going to be recrystallized, it's it's always all of it. You the only time you save any of that crude sample is to um, do take like a melting point or do some other analytical test. Other than that, you want to recrystallize as much of that as possible because you want your yield to be as high as possible. Okay, this is the third sample. If you want to use this one, it's up to you. Seven point two seven. All right, so third sample three is 7.27. If you want to use that number for your crude mass, feel free to use that. That's the third sample. So that, that's what you will write down on our training. And what we'll do is we'll keep track of the amount of ethanol necessary to dissolve each one of those samples. 7.27. It's a If you have a, if you ever do a recrystallization and you got big chunks in there like that, you can always just break them up prior to recrystallize. That, that sometimes will cause you to have to use more solvent than necessary. All right, what's that one? Mm, nah, it's not that bad. See, the good thing about it is even if it's bad, we can make it good. Because once we recrystallize it, we get rid of all the junk. Yeah, so we're going to do that. So there's a couple of tricks that you can do for recrystallization. Uh, one of them is to do what's called seeding. But the only time you have to seed is if your crystals don't come out of solution. And the only time you have to do that is if you use too much solvent. Right, so you don't want your don't want to oversaturate to this sample, and this ethanol is up. Okay, so this this is now going to be uh, this is where the recrystallization is going to take place. So this ethanol, I know it's, you see it on the bench top, but this hot plate was really acting a donkey. So uh, the ethanol is hot. You don't want to add cold ethanol. You want it to be hot so that when you add it. Uh, you add that minimum amount, you can put that flash right back onto the hot plate and start working. Already, we all know it's hot. Because <laughs> it jumped out of the hot uh, plate. Twice. 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 So go ahead and add that. You're going to see immediately that it's not all going to dissolve. Right, so so that's not the whole 25 mils. That's, a, that's about a 10 milliliter portion of that. Right, so you can see, those of you who are watching, if it doesn't dissolve with that initial amount, then it's not enough, right? So that's where you want to keep heating that. But at the same time, at the same time, you want to be adding that the to go ahead and be swirling that. At the same time, you want to keep adding hot ethanol to it. So while you're doing that, the ethanol that's back here, when it starts heating up, like it's, it's already boiling. Go ahead and add some more. Add about five more meals. You can you can actually put take that the uh, ethanol off. Keep that on. Yeah. Keep swirling. That's hot. That's so, so the key here now is to keep heating and swirling until you get all of that solid in solution. 
If it's not all in solution, you either have to continue to heat it. You can take a glass rod and break it up if it's in chunks. Again, if it's a physical change, it does not change the chemistry of aspirin whatsoever. You can beat on it, pulverize it, crush it, whatever you need to do, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, but sometimes you might have to break up the chunks of aspirin that are in there uh, and they're, they're really packed together. Uh, so you keep heating until everything goes into solution. Keep heating and keep swirling. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. can see that here is actually going into solution yeah right the hotter it gets the more it's going to dissolve but you want to keep that solvent hot you can turn that off right yeah. <laughs> just keep, keep swirling it you don't want any solid left in here spoke too soon <laughs> you just turn that down go ahead and put that back keep swirling keep, keep it on the hot because it's got to stay hot if it's not hot then it's not going to dissolve Okay, so let me let me just give you another like rule of thumb. So like when this is being heated, it needs to stay on the heat source. Sometimes when when it if you are heating it and it starts to cool down while you're swirling it, then that crystallization is going to happen immediately, even without cooling it to room temperature or adding water or anything. And you don't want that. The anytime your crystals come out of solution when they're not supposed to, they're going to be less pure than if you uh, allow them to heat and dissolve how they're supposed to. So that's really important to keep it on the heat source like you see it and just swirl it periodically. Uh, don't let all the solvent boil off uh, because otherwise your your the purpose of pure of the recrystallization is to purify aspirin, is to get rid of all the other crap, the leftover salicylic acid and the leftover acetic anhydride and leftover uh, acetic acid, which is a side product, is to get rid of all that. So if you if you don't heat this properly, or if, it, or if the crystals form too fast, it's gonna be impure. Stay hot. If it's not hot, then it's not gonna dissolve. Should I add something? Yeah, you can add more. If it doesn't go in while, it's, while you're heating, you can just add more ethanol. And you can sit that ethanol kind in that back corner to keep it hot. That's not for you all, unless you have a question. And you can actually see that the solid has started to dissolve more. But that's because there's still solid present, you just have to keep heating it. You don't want to add any more solvent because you don't want to supersaturate it. But because you still have a solid present, you want to heat it until all that stuff dissolves. Heat it instead of trying to add more solvent to it to make it make it go in. How much have you used so far? Okay, so sample two, if you're using that, that sample uh, where it says uh, total amount used, you want to put 17 milliliters in that in that slot. If you pick sample two, if you pick sample one, it was it's 15 milliliters. So there's also a slot on here for that. So none of the samples, samples one through three, none of them require a high gravity filtration. So you can even circle that or highlight it, however you want to do it. 
You can circle it, highlight it, check it, whatever. But the answer is no for all three samples, regardless of which one you pick. Cool. You, you ready for some, if you use the 7.14 grams. Okay, and these are the times. Sample one, five minutes. I think it, the time is on there too, y'all. So what, you see what it says time necessary to dissolve crude aspirin. For sample one, it was five minutes. For sample two, four minutes. And then for sample three, seven minutes. So whichever one of those you picked, uh, you can use the, the, the time that corresponds to that. The volume of ethanol used for sample one was 15, for sample two, 17, and then sample three was 25 because that student added the whole shebang. <laughs> so yeah, so 25 meals for sample three. That's why it took so long. Uh, 17 meals for sample two, and then uh, 15 meals for sample one. An anybody have any questions, by the way, before we go forward? We only got a few minutes left. I tried to, I tried to condense this down as much as possible because um, much of lab is answering questions and making sure people don't blow stuff up. So I tried to condense it down to the important parts. Then the time it took was five minutes. So now this is the, the next to last step, <laughs> which is to add that cold water. And once you add it, you want to, you're going to end up, uh, so you let your sample cool to room temperature and then you add cold water. And what that does is it, it's going to force the aspirin out of solution and, but it's going to force it to crystallize. It's not going to cause it to precipitate because that's different. Precipitation happens immediately. Recrystallization happens slowly. So at, when you add the water, as the uh, water and ethanol begin to mix, then the aspirin becomes more and more insoluble. And that's when it comes out of solution. But if it was precipitating, it would be immediate. Like all the solid would come out all at the same time right away. And that's not what happens. But this is, this is a crucial step because that helps to uh, force the aspirin out of solution. And you see it turn milky, right? The reason for that, the reason for the water is that the aspirin itself is soluble in hot ethanol, but it's insoluble in a water ethanol mixture. So when you add the water, what you're doing is you're gonna force the aspirin to come out of solution. All right, because it's not soluble in that water ethanol mixture. So you want to put that right on that sample. You see that? Yeah, go ahead. So you can see for churning, hers don't hers turn milky also, which is a good thing. But what you don't want is crystals immediately. Because that means that your stuff precipitated and it didn't crystallize. The crystals you want to grow over time. So slow. So you just want to put once you get that, add that 40 mils, you're gonna put that on the ice bath. Yep, that's fine. You can see right here that some crystals are starting to form in that layer. That's a good sample. You see them forming on the bottom. A lot of them. Right? And that's what you want. Within the first probably five or five minutes or so, you want to start seeing crystals. So you can see, for those of you who are watching, so what? That's you ice cream in the air game? That was three times there is. Dr. Russell? Yes. What if I chose um, solvent three? I mean, um, <laughs> do I need to change it? No, or it's okay. It's tw it was 25 mils of ethanol. We, we got the crystals back, so, so it's okay. Uh, this is this is sample three, and I kept it in on purpose because I wanted to show that uh, process of seeding and how it actually works. So you're good. Right. But you can see, like, this is a super saturated solution. This is all he, so his aspirin, this is um, 40 mils of cold water. And nothing, like nothing happened because the the uh, 
initial aspirin solution was too saturated with ethanol. It was oversaturated. So you have no crystals in here at the moment. But that's that's going to be fixed. So what we're going to do is we're going to seed it. So I'm going to take a crystal from another sample and put it in here to get his crystal to, to come out of solution. So let me grab a sample corner. So I'm going to seed this. I'm going to take a little bit of another sample. You can see it here. I got some, sorry. I got some aspirin on the tip of this glass rod. Yeah, so so when you have to seed a sample like that, all you need is a tiny fraction of a of an amount. You don't have to put like a a lot of a lot of crystals from somebody else's sample in. You can just put a couple of crystals in and it'll work. It works like a charm. I'm just gonna put this down in here and seed it. And what happens is when you seed it again, the seed the other crystals act like a scaffold. And so his crystals are going to start building around that. So if you chose sample three, you can actually make a note on the data sheet somewhere that that sample had to be seeded in order to uh, recrystallize. And that, that, that's fine. But the total amount of ethanol is 25. Uh, and the crude yield, I think, was 7.27, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to take this and scrape these into there. There's another little trick you could do by scratching the sides of the uh, the flask, but for now, I think this will be good. We'll get that in there and then get some more. And you can see immediately all from one crystal from another sample. You can, and you can see it's cloudy, cloudier. We'll check back on that in about five minutes. It's going to be a lot more crystal. You're welcome. So this is just a, we saw this last week, the vacuum filtration setup. So you have a- Normally we clamp that down because you know those hoses have tension in them and they'll, I've seen those things turn over and break. So it's just a filter flask, which is here, connected to the to an aspirator on the sink. You need a butane funnel with a piece of filter paper in it and a piece of rubber tubing or rubber hose to connect the filter flask to the aspirator. And really that's it. Let me just fast forward past that part. See, compared to the neck of the flask, you can just turn it upside down. And it'll still, because the purpose is to get a good seal on that so you can pull it back. So that's fine with that. And then you just need to sit that up there. You can hold it when, you, when the water starts running. And let's see it down. That in there, and then we're gonna chop a little bit of ethanol on there to hold it in place. So you can wet it to hold it in place, put a little bit of ethanol around the uh, bottom part. Don't be scared. That wasn't enough. Yeah, that was enough. It ain't moving no more, so you good. You just want to seat it. And yes, these are coffee filters. It's okay. Get a good Doing now. That was 
So for the filtration part, you want to make sure that you get like as much of that out as possible. You don't want to leave anything behind because any product that's left behind is going to take away from your percent yield. It was like see-through uh, initially, right? You couldn't see any crystals. And now... So this is the third sample <laughs> after uh, seeding. So before you saw it, it was transparent no crystals, nothing growing. And then after we seeded it, this is what that sample uh, looked like, where you actually had lots of crystals starting to grow. The, the, the problem with this um, sample was that he actually lost uh, some of his uh, aspirin. So the yield wasn't as high as it could have been, but overall the reaction, I think uh, the reaction itself was fine, but the yield was just a little lower than it would normally have been. But this, that, the um, technique of seeding is very important. Sometimes it, you just have to do what you have to do uh, in order to get those crystals to come out because recrystallization is a very finicky. It's like a, it's a, there's an art to it. Uh, and you have to use just the right amount of solvent and you know use the perfect solvent. And you have to, sometimes you go through, before you even do the final recrystallization, you actually test multiple solvents to find the right one. And if you've been, if you are taking organic one right now, and y'all talked about chapter three with functional groups and solubility, you know that like dissolves like, right? So something polar is going to dissolve something polar. So ethanol is polar, aspirin is polar. And so that's why that was chosen. And then not only do you have to consider the polarity, but you also have to consider the temperature. It, it, it can be, they can both be polar. That's awesome. But you also want it to be insoluble at room temperature, which it is. All right, so let me just hit play. A lot of questions. That seeding actually works. Uh, the only thing is, when you see, you have to seed it, at least have to wait a little bit longer to get the maximum yield. Because you don't want to filter it now and leave half of your aspirin in the solution. So we're going to wait about 10 more minutes on that. But you can see after we seeded it, we have a lot of crystals in there now. So we're going to wait about 10 more minutes on that. And for those of so I think that's that's it for that. So are there any uh, any questions before we wrap up? So again, the recrystallization part, it didn't, like I think the original lab that we did was like 45 minutes. So it wasn't a long lab because a lot of the, a lot of the techniques we've already done, like the vacuum filtration and we set that up the week before, so we didn't have to go through how to explain how to do that again. And then uh, it didn't take what, five or 10 minutes to get everything dissolved up. The longest part of this lab was uh, letting, that, letting the uh, aspirin solution sit on the ice bath. Uh, so I chopped all that out because, I mean, that was kind of pointless. But at this point, are there any questions about anything? 